Welcome back to our Best of the Rest series covering all the cards in Aetheral Vault not spoiled individually. As we move toward pre-release, we get closer to finishing our series. In this video, we're going to talk about the rest of the red cards in the set. If you've missed previous episodes about white, blue, or black, you can click the first link in the description and it'll bring you to a handy dandy playlist, super easy. And if you enjoy this video and videos like these, be sure to hit that like button, helps out a lot. Alright, let's do this thing. Chandra's Revolution is 4 mana for a sorcery. It deals 4 damage to target creature, tap target land, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Holy crap, this thing is a bomb for a common. 4 damage to a creature is already something that I'm definitely excited about, but putting your opponent down one land next turn, yes please. I know it's sorcery speed, which isn't ideal, but when you're effectively setting your opponent back a turn for one turn, that could be all the advantage you need. Certainly a playable burn spell, definitely worthy of limited deck inclusion. Also, it completes the art with Pia's Revolution. Oh, it's like family bonding. Destructive Tampering is 3 mana for a sorcery. Choose 1. Destroy a target artifact, or creatures without flying can't block this turn. I do enjoy the flexibility, I really do. And this card does come with 2 powerful red abilities, but 3 mana at sorcery speed? It's a pretty steep price to pay for set abilities. If you're playing an absurdly aggressive red deck in Limited, maybe that second ability is worth playing to wipe their board of blockers, but even then, this is clunky. I suppose it's probably best out of the board of an aggressive deck and you bring it in when you're against artifact heavy strategies. That way both modes are sufficiently useful. That'd be when I play it. Embril Gear Smashers, 3 mana for a 2-3 human warrior. You can tap it and sacrifice an artifact and the smasher deals 2 damage to each opponent. It's a nice way to trigger revolt, so I'm on board here. The problem is that you need a lot of artifacts to make this decent and limited play. But to be real with you, I see this as more of a budget commander card. There are plenty of red-based commander strategies that love to sacrifice artifacts. And if you're on a super budget, the Smasher isn't so bad in Duretti, Slow Bad, or even something like Felden. It's just a thought. Enraged Giant is 6 mana for a 4-4 Giant with Improvised Trample and a Haste. Alright, this might be my favorite non-rare creature in the entire set for Limited. I did not see something like this coming. Enraged Giant is a beefcake. 6 mana for a 4-4 with Trample and Haste? That is not bad. Trample is powerful. Improvise really brings us into Value Town though. If you can get it even 1 or 2 mana cheaper, you're looking at an affordable, giant, fast bomb. Even if you don't have a lot of artifacts, I see this as good. High priority red and common, as far as I'm concerned, this thing is a beast. Frontline Rebel is 3 mana for a 3-3 human warrior that attacks each combat if able. This is an alright filler card. 3 mana for a 3-3, that'll work. There are plenty of 2-3s running around, and 3-3s are great at dealing with those. You do have to attack each combat, but if this drops on turn 3 and you're attacking by turn 4... There are a good many decks that still won't have anything on the field that can block it. Nice pressure, and you can use this to crew vehicles pretty easily avoiding the must attack trigger. Rebel is actually decent. Gremlin Infestation is 4 mana for an enchant aura, enchant artifact. At the beginning of your end step, it deals 2 damage to enchanted artifacts controller. When enchanted artifact is put into a graveyard, create a 2-2 gremlin? Uh, psh, I will take stab wound all day. This is the coolest version of Stab Wound we've seen in a while, and for those who don't know, Stab Wound was a first pickable monster of a card. Gremlin Infestation, while being more expensive, will leave you with a creature, and until then, they take shocks to the face. I don't think this is going to fetch nearly the same priority status Stab Wound did, of course, but it is more than playable, and it should be on your radar as a solid card in any red deck. Even if they use the artifact to trigger a revolt, hey, you got a 2-2, so yeah, not bad. Invigorated Rampage is 2 mana for an instant, choose 1. Target creature gets plus 4 plus 0 and gains trample until end of turn, or 2 target creatures each get plus 2 plus 0 and gain trample until end of turn. This is one of the more playable standard cards we've looked at in this entire series. First things first, obviously going to be grain limited. The power boost is fantastic, but granting trample puts it way over the top for me. Definitely playable, no question about it. In standard though, in the red green energy deck, this could easily find a home. Trample, again, super important. And 2 mana for 4 power? That's hard to pass up at instant speed. Invigorated Rampage is crazy strong. Keep it on your radar, not only for limited, but for standard as well. 
Lathnew Saddleback is five mana for a five four. I mean, you might play this in a few decks where you need a generic top end card. Five mana for a five four is okay. Certainly better than many vanilla creatures we've seen in the past. I mean, it's all right, I guess. Precise Strike is one mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus one plus so and gains first strike until end of turn. Precise Strike is Kindled Fury from Dragons of Tarkir slash Morning Tide. From experience, it isn't all that much to write home about, but if you're in a limited matchup and both decks are clearly trying to win the game on the ground, this could effectively become a removal spell in combat, but again, I keep it in the sideboard until you know you're going to have to smash your way through a wall to win. Not a priority pick at all. Reckless Racer is 3 mana for a 2-3 human pilot with first strike. Whenever it becomes tapped, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Just like looting, rummaging has value as well. 3 mana for a 2-3 is basically the norm now. But this one comes with first strike, so I'm already interested. Tapping it can be when attacking, it can be when crewing, which is nice because you can just crew whenever you dang well please. Reckless Racer is going to be a priority uncommon pickup in any deck running vehicles, and even most decks not running any. Do not ignore card filtering. Card filtering of any kind fetches a high price tag for a lot of players. Don't expect this card to last in packs for long. It's pretty solid. Scrapper Champion is 4 mana for a 2-2 human artificer with double strike. When it enters the battlefield, you get 2 energy. Whenever it attacks, you may pay 2 energy. If you do, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Mother of... What? Scrapper Champion is the real deal. This is an uncommon with a rare level limited power. Definitely a priority pick. 4 mana is a lot, but Double Strike is formidable, and it comes with enough energy to activate itself once, and it'll be a 3-3 when you go into combat. 3-3 with Double Strike for 4 mana? This is first pickable. Probably the most first pickable card we've looked at today, maybe one of the most first pickable uncommons in the entire set. This card is crazy strong, just wow. Wrangle is 2 mana for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature with power 4 or less until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. I can absolutely get behind this ability. It's a mini act of treason and I love it. 2 mana is the perfect cost. Sorcery speed makes sense, of course. I don't necessarily think this is going to be an auto include in any limited strategy, but I do think that this is a great direction for cards like this to go in. I love the design, still not an amazing card, but the design, it's real good. So what do you all think about the rest of the red cards in the set? Personally, based on what we've seen today, I think we're looking at a pretty solid color here. Usually red tends to be all over the place, but this time around it seems quite strong and rooted in those strengths. How do you feel? How do you think it stacks up with white, blue, and black? I'd love to hear what you have to say, so please leave comments and we'll talk about it. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com with Ethervolt pre-release right around the corner. It's time to get your product. The release of the full set is only a week away. If you want to pre-order boxes of Ethervolt right now, you can totally do that. $92 each, shipped right to you super cheap. So if you don't have a local game store or yours is overcharging way too much, check out TCG Player. Fair's prices around. Click the links, help the channel, win, win, enjoy.